have to, for this sentence, ensure that the only time Mr. Halderson comes back into the community is to have the privilege of a burial that he denied his parents. He is going away for the rest of his life without the possibility of parole. That was Chandler Halderson's sentencing that happened on Thursday in Madison, Wisconsin. You'll remember we brought that trial to you live, gavel to gavel. You can go in our on-demand section, too, on CoreTV.com, or if you watch us on a Roku device, or however you do it, and you can watch that trial gavel to gavel as well. Uh, so, so yesterday, um, there was some speaking out at the conclusion of this case. We want to share with you some of what the prosecutor shared during the time of the sentencing hearing. When we talk about the gravity of the offense, it's a, it's a consideration. The court gets to decide what that means. But you should consider that in my mind, in my experience as a prosecutor in this county, as a citizen of this state, I've never heard of a crime more serious. I've never heard of a crime more brutal. Mr. Halderson's mere presence in our community, the fact that he did any of this, has ripped apart the fabric of, of our community. The idea that someone can live amongst us with no warning signs and commit such heinous acts should scare everybody. And it sure as hell scared everybody here. No one who's interacted with Mr. Halderson will ever be the same. For whatever reason he decided to do it, Whatever justification he can come up with in his own mind, whether it be today or down the road in many years, nothing will ever explain it. His actions in, in July of this year were evil. And for this generation and at this time, Mr. Halderson is the personification of evil in our community. Uh, this is one of those cases, it was just stomach turning to watch. He murdered his mother and father and he didn't stop there. He then dismembered their bodies and lied about it to everyone. And the motivation for it was uh, apparently he was living a double life, lying to friends, his girlfriend, his parents. And when they finally caught on to him, that was what he chose to do. And yesterday, it was a surprise to many that he chose to speak out. I was brief, but take a listen to what he said to the judge. I know that in your memorandum, uh, there was an indication once again that Mr. Halderson would uh, not exercise his right to elocute at this hearing. Obviously, just as with trial, it comes up to a decision at the very last minute. I just want to ensure at this moment whether or not Mr. Halderson wishes to make a statement. And thank you for doing that. That has changed. Mr. Halderson would like to give a, a statement to your honor. You may remove your mask if you wish. I believe the conditions in the jail are and, and very good as far as the, uh, um, the pandemic. So if you want to speak without your mask and Attorney Doral's comfortable with that, you could. Absolutely. Okay. And I would only ask that you read slowly, simply because my court reporter has to take down what you're saying, and, the, and sometimes we read faster than we mean to. Your Honor, I want to take this opportunity to state my intent to appeal my convictions. If there are any lawyers listening and willing to take on my appeal, take a moment to please reach out to me. It's not that I do not have feelings. It's that I was warned to not show them due to the scrutiny of this case. Thank you. Thank you. Not showing a lot of feeling now, there is he. All right, let's take a look at what the judge said to him when he gave him his sentence. I have to, for this sentence, ensure that the only time Mr. Halderson comes back into the community is to have the privilege of a burial that he denied his parents. And so on counts one and five, per, sa per statute, I sentence him to life in prison and pursuant to section 973.014 sub 1G3, I find that he is not to be eligible for extended supervision during that course. The sentences on the other counts given two life sentences become rather superfluous to say the least, but at the same time, I absolutely acknowledge that we may be in a completely different position here had he committed the acts of homicide, but then stopped and took other steps to accept responsibility and sought forgiveness of everyone. Because what happens with a weapon in a moment of 
panic is different than what happened over those 48 to 72 hours. The events of which I don't wish to think of or consider once again, having listened to the evidence and observed the testimony uh, and the, uh, the physical evidence. So uh, to make this quite simple, I will impose maximum terms concurrent to each other and concurrent to counts one and five on each of the other counts within the information of which the verdict convicted Mr. Alderson. I do believe that by imposing the maximum, I'm recognizing the severity of those individual acts. All right, so life in prison without the possibility of parole. Uh, I would say he is very lucky. Wisconsin is not a death penalty state uh, because I think the punishment might have been far different if it happened elsewhere. Let me bring in my guests to see what they think about this. Criminal defense attorney Josh Schiffer, trial attorney, former prosecutor Von DeSargent, and former police lieutenant and trial attorney Rick King. Uh, great to have you all here. Uh, I want to just kind of go around the horn and uh, get your, your thoughts on... Um, on Chandler Halderson and what he said in particular, like that he wants to appeal and keep on fighting this, and uh, we know it's going to be taxpayer dollars uh, that are spent uh, through that process. Josh? It, it, it's a window into what's wrong in that young man's head, and I don't know him. I haven't had access to his. Something is profoundly wrong just with the acts and how he responded and what happened. Um, I'm very glad he won't be threatening the community. I hope he gets some help. The yeah. judge was right to protect everybody. Oh, absolutely. He'll never see the light of day. I love how the judge said uh, he'll get out for his funeral. Um, and uh, Vonda, something that, you know, kind of jumped out at me when he's saying he was instructed not to show emotions as a former prosecutor. You always think of, like, what you'd say in response to these guys, don't you? And I kept thinking, yeah, well, was he showing emotion when he murdered his mother and his father and then cut up their bodies and then lied about it to everybody who loved them? Um, your thoughts about what he said to the judge during the hearing, please. My thoughts at that point, uh, you've been convicted. Uh, if at any point in time you need to be shown emotion, it's now. It's the, this is the time you need to break down and start sobbing and begging for at least an opportunity to have the chance to be considered for parole. But the fact that he was so cold and callous and calculating, um, I agree with what Josh said, it is a window into his psyche. It was just chilling for him to, I think it was three sentences that he said. And he mentioned nothing about his parents, right. nothing at all. He didn't mention them at all. And that to me was just chilling. Yes. That you can be convicted of murdering your parents and not even mention, not even say you miss them. Right. Right, Vonda, absolutely. Rick King, tapping into your experience as an investigator when you question suspects and interrogate them, uh, don't you pay attention to what they don't say as well, right? I never heard him say, Your Honor, I'm innocent. I didn't do this, did he? No, he didn't say it, not once. And here's the thing, you know, as a former police officer and now criminal defense attorney, even as a police officer, I, I take no joy in throwing people away. But I also recognize that in society, there are people that need to be away. His affect, his lack of remorse. And I also understand that, you know, we don't, we tell our, you know, our clients, hey, no outburst, you know, keep it, keep it neutral. We tell them that, but there's comes a point in time as Vonda, you know, eloquently pointed out where like, you're gonna have to, you need to, it's, but you should feel it. I shouldn't have to tell you, you should feel it at that point. And he, uh, he didn't, and his total, everything about him is scary. Yes, sure is. Rick King, Vonda Sargent, Josh Schiffer, thank you all. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, something else pretty scary, the allegations against Chad and Lori Daybell. We know that they were accused of working together, accused of murdering Lori's children, JJ and Ty Lee. Uh, they were found dead in Chad's backyard. And the two were united in holy matrimony, but now they want to be severed in a court of law. At least Chad wants to be severed uh, from Lori when it comes to how his case goes to trial. There's a hearing on that today. We're going to break down what you need to know next on Court TV Live.